Well, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the show. Okay, I'm a little bit cropped over here because uh, I got a different laptop and I'm trying to figure that one out. Um, it was uh, some test runs. And also because I've got really problems with my teeth. I'm going uh, for a whole bunch of uh, medical procedures over here. And so hopefully you can understand me. And I don't want to get you guys a gross what's going on. But anyway, um, a lot of things to talk about. A bunch of movie reviews. and But... Uh, PCA announcement, okay, for your information, FYI, okay, um, let me go over here, let's go right into it, okay, now this show is for the mothership, so it's going to be 25 minutes, and I'm going to start doing with uh, YouTube Shorts, and I'm posting on Instagram, and I'm posting on TikTok, all different little things related to the music, and the artwork, and AI, and stuff like that, uh, that's, I'll explain that more in the next show, because I'm going on a trip, and so I'm going to be taking advantage of Instagram, TikTok, okay, so, and YouTube Shorts, okay. Um, hopefully, the beach is by the beach. Um, so hopefully, you'll, you'll check that out. So if you don't see me post anything here, and there's a repeat over here on the mothership and on YouTube, it's because I'm using YouTube show, Shorts, Instagram, TikTok, okay. Uh, that's TikTok doesn't get canceled, unfortunately. You know what's going on. As you can see, uh, I got rid of the blue, uh, the blue stripe uh, screen I had. I got the got the with King Kong. This is one of two posters that I got. This is temporary, um, and there's a drum set behind me, but the camera's off angle. So, but anyway, let's go right into the beginning. Okay, um, Godzilla minus one, um, and Amazon Prime Video. Believe it or not, and I got Amazon Prime. They haven't made an announcement on Amazon Prime for some reason. But anyway, um, so Japan is going to get the hard copy, DVD, Blu-ray release, okay? Uh, and then it's going to be a, an Amazon Prime video also. Now, I'm, they don't say it's going to be uh, available to, well, it's going to be Amazon Prime in Japan. I'm sorry. As far as the U.S., they pushed it back mainly because of... Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, number two, or Godzilla, and uh, so Japan is going to get it, and U.S. is going to be postponed, okay, um, so as far as the hard copy and prime video, we don't know when it's going to come into the U.S. again, again, the other picture is pushing $450 million, yes, it's going to be number two behind Godzilla 2014, as far as the biggest moneymaker, or Skull Island, well, we're going to see. Right now, it is the third and third position, which means we're going to get, um, the director's going to get his uh, promise of making it a trilogy, something that Rebel Moon wants. Zack Snyder wants to do uh, not only to continue with number three, but he wants to do six films. Well, relax. I'll come, I'll, I'll come back to that because I got that posted right over here. Yep. I'll come back to that. Okay, guys? Okay. And also... Henry Cavill, James Bond, doesn't look that way, but the ministry, I'll get to that. Okay, let, let, let me finish this up, because I got a couple of things here. Anyway, so that's what's going to happen with Godzilla Minus One, it's coming out in May, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, um, doing a huge hit, okay, doing great in the box office, it went out to number two or three, but it's going to be in the top five of the year until Deadpool comes out then, who knows what's going to happen, but uh, FYI information, real quick. Okay, I played this big guy, remember? Let me see. Let me light him up. Oop. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the... the uh, it was $64, went down to $44, and Target didn't have it anymore. Walmart picked it up for $44 for about one week. And now you go to a Walmart website. Am I showing that correctly? Yeah, well, yeah, there we go. It's going for $117 now. Apparently, it got discontinued. It cost too much to make, and then and it was not really selling. There we go. Oh, the batteries are dying up? I guess so. That's three. I still forgot the amount to that video of him walking. He, he walked kind of drunk, like he just got out of the bar. That's kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, Walmart has $117 now. So this apparently, this is going to become a collector's item. Okay, now, talking about Godzilla vs. Crime real quick. Okay, buyer beware. This is Kong, King Kong, 1976. Okay, uh, if I can 
really show you. Let me point this out. Okay, you see those numbers? Amazon Prime. If you go there, some of them have a picture, some of them don't. This is not re region free. Region free? Yeah. So most players cannot play. This is the 4K. The 4K I could play on Jimmy, who owns Netflix. Uh, he could play it on his Xbox because if it plays 4K. It would not play the Blu-ray. It recognizes that enough. This is not an American release. This is a, a British only. Okay? So when you see this, that's your fair warning. I'm sending this back because I got the other version by Shot Factory. There you go. Oh, let me show you the disc. Okay. It's the same disc. Okay. Yep. That's Jeff Bridges. And, uh, yeah. It has those two coding things. You see that? It won't play American release. Okay. Shot Factory had another version of this. Okay. And that has the commentary, the historian commentary. Uh, and it has a whole bunch of bonus features. So if you got that, you're okay. Unfortunately, the price is going up on that because that... That got deleted, and I'm just trying to sell this here. This has the same commentaries, okay, but it has got an, an hour of extra features not available on the other one. I saw the features. They're good. If you're a collector, maybe you want to get it. Uh, if you're happy with the other one, you'll be fine. Me, I'm a nitpicker. I, I want, you know, if the director says, oh, I include a kitchen sink, and I get it, and there's no kitchen sink, I want the kitchen sink. But that's just me. So if you got the Shop Factory version of it, you're okay. Okay, so that's your PCA. Now, another thing. This is the original copy. Um, I'm going to see if I, I have time at the end of the show talking about this. Jimmy just got the Abyss, and we're still waiting for Alien. They really got backlog on this here. Um, get the hard copies, mainly because uh, if, you, if you download it, there's a lot of features you can get on Amazon Prime. You get the two films, cut, uncut. And there's a lot of features uh, that are not available on downloading it. For sites, you have to go anywhere, movies anywhere, anyhow. That website, yeah, you can get this bonus feature. So beware. Get the hard copy. The files concerned are all three. But there's one thing missing in the bits, which I gotta double check. This is the DVD copy, and the thing with this here is text commentary. Like I'm, I'm a completist. And I heard the new Blu-ray does not have the text commentary. You ever see Star Trek Next Generation? Um, Michael Sada, I believe, and his wife, they have text, com text commentaries on the bottom of a, uh, every episode. You know, they, they type it in. I say, look behind uh, uh, Oro, and you will see there's a blue, uh, blue screen mishap or anything. They text it in instead of having a, a visual commentary or hearing commentary on top of that. But just to let you know, okay? Um, that's PCA announcement. Oh, also one thing. Have you ever seen the King Kong version? But I, I just do this. Oh, what are we on? <laughs> I got so many shelves I'm, I'm pulling out of. Uh, you'll see Otto from uh, DS9. He's in this, believe it or not. There's a reason why. Next. Okay, so let's ha let's go backwards, shall we? Uh, the big stunt, yes. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly... What's that again? Warfare. Okay. Uh, a solid three out of five. The first half hour, fantastic. Uh, that's in the trailer. They blow up the boat and they go into an, an active war camp to rescue one of the guys so they can join the team. They blow shit up. Body count. Fantastic. Then the ending, last half hour, where they, they're ordered to sink this boat and then instead decide, let's capture it. Yeah. The middle, the black dude with the gorgeous babe. It sinks the whole movie. It gets, it slows down the pacing, and it drags. They could have snapped an, a good half hour out of this and make it a, a nice tight ninety minutes. Uh, when I say a three out of five, if you were really a fan of them, I'm Harry Cavill and Jack Reacher. Yes, <laughs> with a bow and arrow or whatever you can get his hands on. Body count. Hysterical in the beginning with his and does a Swedish accent. Um, he's really good. The cast is good. But that middle just sinks the movie. It really kills the pacing on it. And I couldn't wait to the end. Because I knew, I knew the whole history. This is based on a true story. But one thing. The true story is they put a, um, you know, a, a ragtag band together 
And they went in there, and that one shot was fired. That will make it into a documentary on Hulu. <laughs> you can't have it for the big cinema. So Guy Ritchie took, um, you know, a whatever situation. What happens if we put guns on, on these guys' hands? What would happen? Big, huge body count. So that is the kind of stretch. But it's a Guy Ritchie film. You got to expect that. Like I said, if they really stuck to the uh, to the team infiltrating the Nazis and infiltrating this little island where they got this boat that helps the, the U-boats, and, uh, they, you know, it would have been like a documentary. It really, really would be slow pacing, very uninter very uninteresting. No, I mean the teeth problem again. But anyway, but it is a fun movie. I liked it. A three out of five, wait to Netflix or whoever is going to pick it up, okay? Uh, but it wasn't bad at all. Okay, what's my time? Oh, I'm ahead of time. Okay. Uh, next. Um, oh, one thing. Because I put this up. Okay. Um, hmm. This or that. I don't want to do this here. Okay. Now, at the end, you you see, try to recognize the names. Because what happens is at the very end of the movie, they showed the credits, but they showed the fa faces of the actual guys involved in the thing here. And unless you, unless you remember everybody's name in the movie, and then you connect it, you know, a uh, sergeant or corporal or captain so and so, then you can relate what happens to them. They all got medal of honors. They show the actual faces, the actual people. Um, but you don't, you can't put two and two together because what they should have done was like Henry Cavill, and then the real gentleman that he betrayed. They should have done that. They didn't do that. I'm bringing up a movie here. Midway. Of course, the Battle of Midway, actual two story, okay? Um, how they conquered uh, the Japanese after Pearl Harbor. Uh, two story, this is a remake of another film. Uh, well, not really, not really a remake. Because this film, what it does, it takes the viewpoint of, I can find it. I put it up in the shelf here somewhere. Dummy. Ah, the original. This is from the USA point of view. Action film came back and uh, came out in the, uh, in the 70s. Now, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be doing a special, remember I said about Star Trek and Star Wars and my favorite Godzilla films and my favorite King Kong films and all that. Yes, I will get to that. Okay, there's going to be specials. Memorial Day weekend, I'm going to be covering more on this. But, uh, all-star cast, these were the big guys back then. Uh, Tristan Heston, damn you, damn you all to hell, Henry Fonda, uh, all-star cast. Uh, they, what they did over here, they had actual footage from the war, believe it or not. Now, in this one, in Midway, they have the Japanese point of view. Okay? And talk about Rebel Moon in a second. Ed Screen plays um, the, the main captain over here. Uh, the main pilot. Who actually takes one of the bombs that he's carrying? He drops it right in the middle of the deck and blows up the whole F carrier, Japanese uh, carrier. Uh, I believe it was the uh, Akiju. And then what happens is, um, anybody seen Shogun? Okay, this is the original, 1980. Okay, the Shogun Mufun. Can you see him? Right there. Yep. I'm sorry for the glare. Okay, 1980. Uh, one more episode. Little did I realize in the new Shogun, the girl who does the translation, she was in Godzilla Monarch. I got to go back and see that again. I didn't realize it's the same girl, believe it or not. But anyway, um, if you've seen the uh, FX slash Hulu of version of this, okay. The actor who was in Bullet Train and was in John Wick. Okay, um, hard to, uh, name a little hard for me to pronounce, but anyway, he's the, uh, he's the emperor, but one of the other lords, Shogun lords, another Japanese dude, he's got the beard, but he smiles a lot, have you seen the FX version of it, they talk about him getting an Emmy Award, and I'm going to do a full review once the show's over, we have one more episode to go, and anyway, he plays the, cap, uh, the captain of uh, Kiji. The, uh, the character, so he's really focused on this one, 
Okay, what I like about this movie, it, it focuses on the Japanese viewpoint of them getting their ass kicked big time. So the guy from Shogun, it, it plays the, uh, the captain of the aircraft carrier. He's in this, along with Ed Scrine. Highly recommended, Midway. If you ever get to see the streaming, he's floating around somewhere. This gets a four out of five. Okay. Um, rumor. Uh, Henry Cavill. He said he was too young when he auditioned for James Bond. Now they say he's too old. A lot of people are getting this wrong. Five movies, 15 years. That was Daniel Craig. Now, Sean Connery did seven films. Uh, no, five films. Roger Moore did seven films. Excuse me. All I can say is make it a trilogy. Three films within 10 years span. And Harry, Harry Kenville will, will fit perfectly as James Bond. That's what I'm pushing for. Just make it, make it a trilogy, make it within the span of 10 years, and don't forget, uh, Roger Moore was pushing 60 when he did, uh, what was it, the one in San Francisco with Christopher Walken, it slipped my mind, but the last James Bond of his tenure. Anyway, so I think um, Henry Cavill can do a trilogy of James Bond. That's what they should do, okay? The people in charge don't know what they're doing. Well, it's Hollywood, what else is new? Okay, now, Talk about Eskrine, yes, he plays the, the Darth Vader guy. Now, I'm not going to get too much into this in case you're curious. If you don't like the first one, I didn't. Okay, a two out of five. This one, I give you three out of five. You got to ignore the whole first hour. Okay, now, because they find out there's a princess missing, and that's going to explain number three. It tells you at the end. He has a, a, a mind of doing this a six-part series. Okay, my, 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 my six, my six, 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 yeah, six part series, okay, and what's going to happen is, uh, if the ratings are, are good for Netflix, the, the first one was, believe it or not, and people tune in, so people are tuning in for this one, I'll give this a three out of five, this was way better than the first one, and it finally gave you some uh, background on some of these guys, the first movie didn't do that, it's just a ragtag fighting the, the bad guys, well, the Empire, <laughs> pun intended, anyway, so Ed Screen, uh, Screen, I believe, well, he was in Midway playing uh, the the hero over here playing the Darth Vader type. Okay, nothing really original. People have said, ah, oh, there's a uh, there's a bunch of inf uh, Western influences like the Magnificent Seven, which is based in Jap uh, the Seven Samurai Japanese picture back in back in 1950s, black and white version. But anyway, uh, three out of five. If you don't want to get into the story or the characters, mm -hmm, it, it is weak in that department. Just tune in into the, right up to about 60 minutes, but the picture's two hours. A little a little plus two hours, maybe because they got 10 minutes worth of credits at the end. Go one hour into this movie, and you see a lot of action, a lot of body count, a lot of spaceships. Choo, choo, boom, choo, boom, boom, a lot of good stuff. Uh, I was really happy with the second half of the movie, and the special effects were good. Some people saying, oh, CG's a little bit rough. Nah, I said the, the action... Zack Snyder is really good with action. He's really bad in writing scripts. He, he's got he got two other writers with him helping this out, and the script just is just awful. And the pacing and too much slow motion. He's got to cut that out. If we cut out the, the slow motion, the picture coming an hour, maybe forty minutes. Okay, but do I recommend this? Three out of five. You have friend's house. Tell them fast forward, go into sixty minutes into the movie, and just see the last hour of blowing shit up. You have a good time with it. It wasn't bad. Okay, hey, I'm going into part three. Mm, Got to have more action, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I'll be looking forward to it. I got to admit, okay, so this wasn't too bad. Um, okay, I'm going to go here for some reason. Transformers. I don't know about this one. Things to look forward to. This is one of them. Uh, the problem with this is it's, it's offbeat. Okay, it's not a continuation. Um, I tried to bring up Transformers last time on Amazon, and the laptop was uh, confusing. That had a trivia thing, okay? If you see uh, Transformers, uh, the last one, um, Saturday Night Live, Pete Davidson, he played one of the Autobots, okay? And uh, it, there's a commentary, uh, or actually general trivia included in your subscription. But there was no commentary for the DVD Blu-ray release. But there is a trivia throughout the whole movie, which you'll find interesting. I'll try to bring that up next time. That's why I'm showing you this. Um, FY, 
FYI, if we're for your information. Uh, so if you see Transformers, the last movie, um, and, you know, this, uh, well, the secret is out already that um, G.I. Joe might make some kind of connection with Transformers. That should be interesting. Uh, that is mentioned at the end of the movie, if you haven't seen it. Spoiler alert, or well, but at least it gives you something to look forward to, right? Uh, because I know a lot of you did not see Transformers. So I don't know how this is going to do. Uh, this is the, the beginning, but this has nothing to do with the live action of what they're planning to do. Okay? Uh, what Something else I want to cover? Okay, let's go backtrack a little bit. Let's see. Uh, charts. Um, what did I see here? Okay, Roadhouse, three out of five, a lot of action. That British dude with the beard, he's hysterical. If you see Roadhouse, make sure you tune into the credits at the end because that guy makes a cameo again at the end credits. You think he got killed? Nah. So I think they're pushing it for like a, a secret also. Danzel, uh, that's the one. Who, we saw the commercial with the dragon. She spends an hour getting chased by the dragon inside the cave. Waste of time. At the very end, it's in the trailer. She's there talking to the badass queen. And you see the dragon up on top of the castle. That's the end of the movie. The dragon fries the castle, end of the movie. But they did have one nice shot. You see the boat that she rides in, into, in, into this country. And she takes the boat and gets out of there. And the boat is here. And all of a sudden, the dragon flies right next door. She met, she, she uh, hunted the dragon put the difference aside, and they become partners. I thought that was pretty cool. The dragon part is the guy who did, um, who designed the Godzilla, the American Godzilla. He designed this dragon. Really nice. And the dragon talks. I had no problem. If you like dragons, you like the movie. The movie's a little, you know, a little dragging, okay? Um, but uh, it did have a good ending. Um, would I recommend it? The picture is a two, but the dragon, I give it a three. They did a really good work. So you want to see the the, uh, the dragon getting his getting his freak on? I definitely uh, re recommend it. Okay, um, Wonka. I almost got it. He's doing a Bob Dylan uh, biography, Willy Wonka over here, and uh, unfortunately, it's filming in Jersey and City, but they they wanted me to cut everything: the beard, the mustache, the hair. I'm you know getting back with with the band together, and I'm growing my hair back again. Not bold, just a lot of gray. But, yeah, they wanted me to cut and say, wait, it's a picture that's supposed to be there in the 60s. My partner friend, music friend, you're going to be hearing a lot about John, the bass player. He's on the movie. And he said, yeah, they made him cut his hair. It was ridiculous. It's supposed to be the 60s, the 50s. 60s with the hippies. Nope, it's before then, where everybody had short-cut hair, back in the early 60s. And I heard that I had a chance to work on this, the new Bob Dylan movie with Willy Wonka. Ed Norton was there playing uh, tunes. He plays Pete Seeger. And um, they had some duets together. And during, between breaks, uh, Ed Norton was playing Led Zeppelin songs. Go figure. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention one last thing. I, I mentioned about background work. Yes. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Ay, ay, ay. I keep throwing these damn discs around. <laughs> oh. This one, I forgot to mention. This was my first casting thing. Um, I'm going to be covering more. At the very end, the very light scene, from the World Trade Center, Dino Dolores put an advertisement out saying they were looking for a couple of a hundred people. Well, 3,000 showed up. No pay, but you get to see the monkey. I was one of them. I'm in the end scene. You don't see me, though. That was my first background acting job, believe it or not. Yes, I've been doing it for that long. And the second night, 30,000 people show up. I didn't see Jeff Bridges, but I did see um, Jessica Lange. I didn't know she was a model at that time. I say, who's she? Oh, she's the one who's playing uh, the King Kong's love interest. Okay, whatever. Well, it's in Jessica Lange. Never heard of her. Cute thing, skinny. But I'll be talking more about that in future show, like I mentioned. Okay, let me see my time. Okay, 25, almost wrapping it up. Um, now I mentioned the music. This is one of the many instruments you're going to be seeing. You're going to be seeing me on the guitars and keyboards. Hopefully that drum set. If I can put this out without matching everything. Yeah. That's it. That's me playing. Mm-hmm. YouTube shorts. Instagram. 
Tic Tac. I'm going to see if I can get clearance to play uh, the Godzilla scene. I don't know was, what, how's that going to turn out. I did it for Tic Tac. They had no problem. YouTube, you know, you know how they are with copyrights and shit. Now, talking about music, what was my biggest influence? Yeah, they made the big announcement. Beatles, let it be. It's going to be on Disney+. Plus. This was um, Get Back was based on the Let It Be movies that released back in the early 70s. And uh, the movie was so downloaded and it, it was just a put down a very sad state of affairs the way it was edited the way it was filmed it was all grainy so peter jackson went in and created get back taking some of that footage and adding other footage that was never presented before completely digital well let it be it's gonna be re-released -re uh they cleaned it up but that did leave some of the film green but you know peter jackson and his a, a particular ai company they cleaned it up so that's coming out in may Another couple of weeks, so boom, we're getting um, uh, minus one. We're getting Beatles, Godzilla, rumors of uh, Henry Cavill. Okay, so and of course Billy Joel and Madison Square Garden. Um, his last show on CBS. Uh, his show clocks in over two and a half hours. You only saw an hour and a half on the CBS special, so I believe they're going to be coming out with that. Okay. Um, Okay, so, so let me just go back. There we go. Now, if you want to direct click right over here, it says Instagram.com for Ranky Sun. Follow the arrow right over here. And three more links as a direct link to TikTok, Instagram. I got, I'm also on Pinterest and SoundCloud. I'll be mentioning more of that on the next show. But for now, you got Instagram, TikTok, and I believe I got YouTube shorts around here somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, this is the Continental, a cell of three out of five with Mel Gibson. This is the actual place. This was a restaurant we used to go to back in the 80s. And this is Lady Gaga, uh, at the federal courthouse. And this was an, uh, and, uh, she climbed up the stairs with them, without, with makeup and without makeup because it was filmed over two days. And so, I mean, playing, I saw a, a piano lying on the side and started playing it. More on YouTube shorts, more on Instagram, more on TikTok, okay? Uh, thanks, everybody. Now, if you go to the YouTube site, please press uh, like, subscribe. I need hits, okay? Again, I'm not profit. I'm not making any money. But anyway, uh, it says I'm having performance issues. Okay, well, that's about it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Um, like I said, there'll be another big announcement coming in in two weeks. But I'll be having little mini shows on YouTube website. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for uh, uh, tuning in and watching. And thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And i see you next time. Yes, that's me interviewing Mark Camel. This is for the YouTube site. They cut me off in 28 minutes. So this is a little bonus over here. Yes, he was doing um, Wing Commander number four for the PC. And I, I had my punk rock look. I was in a band, and that was my punk rock look. Very nice guy. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, because I used to do, uh, I used to film conventions. Icon, that was like a Comic-Con convention um, uh, out on Long Island. And uh, I, I I mentioned Otto because I had mentioned meet him and I, did, I filmed a little a clip of him uh, doing a seminar thing. Um, Blue Mummy of uh, Lost in Space. I'm a big Lost in Space fan. I'll be mentioning that. Yeah, if you go to face groups, Facebook groups, I'm part of some of them. Planet of the Apes, I'm a part of. Um, um, Planet of oh, Lost in Space. There's a couple of them I'm, I'm part of. So you might find me there in face groups. Okay, because the next announcement, I'm going to show you my uh, two official logos that I'm going to be using. One of them is the eyeball. That's that's how you recognize me on Facebook. That's going to be the next show. Okay, let me just wrap that up. That's, that's the little announcement I got. And thanks for tuning in. And let me see if I can turn this. What's that red button? There we go. Okay, guys. See you next time. Thanks a lot.